Hi, hope you're doing well. I'm K. Rashi Kumar and in my storytelling series, well this is my fourth story for narration as a mark of celebration of World Book Day which is observed on April 23 every year. So let's begin. Adda. The silent melancholy was apprehensively searching for a few words to express its unvocal agony. Dr. Manav Parihar made a futile effort to hide it, wiping away the spattering drops of sweat that had appeared on his broad forehead, owing to the tsunami of emotions swirling around his mind and heart. Are you okay, Manav? Bela, his wife inquired perturbingly, pouring water in his half-empty glass. I've cooked your favourite palak paneer and butter naan. Hey, special dinner tonight? Bela attempted to cheer up her husband. Little uneasiness is there. I'm feeling heavy on the chest. Dr. Parihar replied, placing the terry towel back on the top back of the dining chair, kept adjacent to his right and settled against the chair slat. Worried Bela swiftly got up from a chair and stood next to Dr. Parihar to console him. I feel better, he said, sipping water, placing Bela's hand on his chest. A father's heart was beating fast. Just last month, they had thrown a party for the close friends and relatives on the occasion of Dr. Parihar getting elected as the chairperson of Aditya Group of Hospitals, Raurkela. He was well known across the town for his simplicity, benevolence and gentility. Dr. Parihar was 51 and a renowned heart surgeon who had earned name and fame on the merit of his sheer skill, hard work and tireless dedication towards his profession. Serve me a little more paneer, Bela. It is delicious. Oh, Bela felt like a newlywed girl and a smile radiated with joy. I was needlessly worrying about Manav's health, Bela thought as she served a second helping to Manav. How is your knee pain, Bela? And dear did Harsh call? When is Sagar coming back from a Shimla trip? Dr. Parihar threw a volley of questions at Bela. An energetic talk was the verification of his good mood, Bela believed. Manav and Bela have had an intercaste love marriage. After two years of their marriage, they were blessed with Harsh, their eldest son. As Manav's elder brother's wife had suffered multiple miscarriages, they had legally adopted Harsh. For the last 15 years, they were settled in England. It was the toughest decision willingly taken by Manav and Pela, but they were happy that their brother's family was now complete because of Harsh. Four years later, Sagar was born to them, a real darling, both for his mom and dad. He was 19 now. This cold weather aggravates my knee pain. Yes, Harsh cold, he's fine. He shared a secret with me. Our son is in love. Her name is Natasha, Bela excitedly updated Manav. I told him straight away to marry Natasha. My advice was simple. If you love her and if you feel she's the one for you, don't delay. No heartbreaks, hmm? Sagar is coming day after tomorrow. Bela went on answering queries of Manav as she cleared the table. Super awesome! It was an amazing trip! Absolute fun we had! Sagar was speaking on his landline. Great! When did you come back? Disha, his friend, asked softly from the other side. This very morning, Disha! He answered. Oh, then you must be tired. Take rest, Sagar. Bye! Disha winded up the call. Disha was Sagar's well-wisher. Though they were of the same age, Disha was more a friend to Bela. The sanity and wisdom attained by grey hair hardly makes one commit a mistake in recognizing characters 
though there is always an exception to every rule and law. Here Mrs. Bela Parihar was right. Disha was a happy-go-lucky girl, vulnerable and modest. She was blessed with wisdom much beyond her years, which is why understanding life from an elevated perspective came naturally to her. She had developed a spontaneous amiability with parents of her friends and most of them confided in her. Sagar was a sober young boy, a studious lover of sports who kept pace with trendy fads. I have a girlfriend, he had confided in Disha one fine evening. Wow, Disha was cool about it, as cool as any of his bro buddies. You know what Disha? Surabhi and Viraj like each other. Surabhi is like my sister and Viraj is my bestie. So I just arranged their meetings at my home from time to time. And what about your mom and dad? Are they aware of it, Sagar? Disha inquired innocently, with the eyes clearly conveying doubts over Sagar's action. Within the depths of her heart, Disha thought it wasn't the right thing that Sagar was doing. But then what about his friends who were letting him do that in the absence of his parents? Her conscience asked her. Youth is an obnoxious stage of passion and rage where one often tends to ignore the trust of parents or elders for the fleeting fake relationships that ultimately pushes one into an abyss of disaster. A simple person can never handle the play of a shrewd brain. The Shah's conscience answered its own queries. And this was the very cause of Dr. Parihar's anxiety. He was worried about Sagar because he knew well what the wanton bunch of friends in his group could handle in fun. His simple son just couldn't. Bela and Manav, as parents, had seen hope in Disha and had even shared with her their heart's agony. They had pinned their hopes on her that perhaps as a good friend, she could make Sagar wise up. Every parent sees beautiful dreams for their children. They work hard tirelessly day and night all through their lives so that the children may live happily even after they have left this mortal world. But destiny is many a time more powerful than man's imagination. Sagar's group of girls and boys soon saw Disha as a hurdle in the way of their fun and merrymaking. Soon she became their eyesore and they made all efforts to draw Sagar away from Disha. It was an unnerving experience for Disha that day. In the early hours of morning, Disha had seen a dream that woke her up startlingly. I am at peace now, Disha. God bless you, child. Disha was benumbed. She ran to the window of a room, drew open the curtains and watched the star-studded sky of the wee hours in a trance. She remembered how she had prayed day and night for Dr. Parihar's good health and speedy recovery, the moment she had known that he was diagnosed with brain tumour. Dr. Manav Parihar, was no more. Her heart told her. Soon, the sad news was confirmed by a family friend. A few days later, Bela called Disha and requested her to attend the last day of Manav's morning ceremony as per the Hindu traditions. It was the 13th day of his death. Dr. Parihar's villa was his dream home. Every brick and wall used to echo the love of Manav and Bela. Within no time of Dr. Parihar's sad and untimely demise, the villa was sold. Why did Sagar dispose of his dad's dream house? Why didn't Harsh intervene? 
Why did the better halves let it happen? Why couldn't Bela stop it? Are dreams so inexpensively intangible to be forsaken? Disha's brain was in a whirlwind as she heard the sad news of the sale. As time passed and meetings between a grieving Bela and Disha became scarce, Sagar's friends did the rest. One day, during a rare meeting, Mrs. Parihar, out of the blue, asked Disha not to ever again come to meet her. Disha, a young woman of her words and promise, nodded her head and left in shock. She didn't ever meet Bela again. Disha's heart root. When the loving home of Dr. Parihar became an adda for Sagar and his friends in his absence, and how this slowly became the cause of his and his wife's inexplicable grief was something Sagar may never know. But one thing Disha surely knew. The bond she had shared with Dr. Parihar was that of soul partners, which was stronger, much beyond the superficial world. After all, they did have one thing in common between them. Both were Sagar's genuine well-wishers. Hope you like the story. I would be glad if you share your feedback or would leave your comments in the comment section. Until we meet again for our next story, take very good care of you. Lots of love and God bless.